there's something about this. We see that now. And I'm convinced that by acknowledging the pain and loss of others, even as we respect the traditions and ways of life that make up this beloved country, by making the moral choice to change, we express God's grace. Amen. We don't earn grace. We're all sinners. We don't deserve it. But God gives it to us anyway. And we choose how to receive it. It's our decision how to honor it. None of us can or should expect a transformation in race relations overnight. Every time something like this happens, somebody says, we, we have to have a conversation about race. We talk a lot about race. There's no shortcut. We don't need more talk. should believe that a handful of gun safety measures will prevent every tragedy. It will not. People of goodwill will continue to debate the merits of various policies as our democracy requires. This is a big, raucous place America is. And there are good people on both sides of these debates. Whatever solutions we find will necessarily be incomplete. But it would be a betrayal of everything Reverend Pigney stood for, I believe, if we allowed ourselves to slip into a comfortable silence again. You're right. Once the eulogies have been delivered, once the TV cameras move on, to go back to business as usual. That's what we so often do. To avoid uncomfortable truths about the prejudice that still infects our society. To settle for symbolic gestures without following up with the hard work of more lasting change. That's how we lose our way again. It would be a reputation of the forgiveness expressed by those families if we merely slipped into old habits, whereby those who disagree with us are not merely wrong but bad, where we shout instead of listen, where we barricade ourselves behind preconceived notions or well-practiced cynicism. Brother Pigman once said, across the South, we have a deep appreciation of history. We haven't always had a deep appreciation of each other's history. What is true in the South is true for America. Clem understood that justice grows out of recognition. of ourselves in each other. That my liberty depends on you being free too. That, that history can't be a sword to justify injustice or a shield against progress, but must be a manual for how to avoid repeating the mistakes of the past, how to break the cycle a roadway toward a better world. He knew that the path of grace involves an open mind, but more importantly, an open heart. That's what I felt this week. 
an open heart. That more than any particular policy or analysis is what's called upon right now, I think. What a friend of mine, the writer Marilyn Robinson, calls that reservoir of goodness beyond and of another kind that we are able to do each other in the ordinary cause of things. That reservoir of goodness. If we can find that grace, anything is possible. If we can tap that grace, everything can change. Amazing grace. Amazing grace.